Welcome to the Church of the Living God, Living Godcast. Our prayer is that this message speaks to you, impacts you, and inspires you. Please enjoy today's message, and we invite you to contact us if you need prayer, appreciate this word, or would like more information on Church of the Living God. Be blessed today. It is good to be in the house of the Lord, to sense his presence, to know that he is here. He is worthy of the worship that has been given unto him. And we know that God uh, has a plan. We don't necessarily know exactly what that plan is sometimes, but we know that God has a plan. And uh, we've thought several times during this week that in some ways it was like nine 9-11, you know, those years ago and such a panic in the country and all of those things. But yet God moved and and people were stirred and people began to look uh, toward heaven. And sometimes people say, well, you know, it's just not right uh, for me to wait till hard times or difficult times and then cry out to God. And I just say, no, I think it's a perfect time to call out to God. Uh, And we need to do that for our governor. We need to do that for uh, our president, we need to do that for this country and the countries around the world and, and the American citizens that are around the world and away from home. And so there's much to pray for, and we definitely need to be in prayer in this time. Let's not allow it to overwhelm us in a place that we've just become paralyzed. Uh, let's, let's take it. Let's take it. Just rise up and, and take the responsibility to pray. Take the responsibility to call out on the Lord. And, uh, and he will do that. Uh, many of you have uh, already heard my eldest sister has passed away. And uh, this week we're going to be having her service. And um, we've had several, several contacts and people that are uh, just uh, sharing uh, with us their prayers uh, at this time. And so we do appreciate that. Uh, none of us are beyond Uh, natural consequences in this life. And this is a part of life. And it's a tough part, one of the tough parts. But God is so good. And we find him faithful even still. All right, this morning, um, yeah, not quite morning. (laughs) We're going to go to Luke chapter 13, verse 6. And uh, we're going to read a parable that Jesus Uh, is given. And it says that he spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. And he said, cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And so what has happened is that the, the farm owner, the man that owns the fields, has come uh, into the vineyard and he had a fig tree that had been there now for several years. And so he came to look again this year and to see if there was going to be any fruit on this fig tree. Uh, but When he got to looking, uh, there was no fruit on the fig tree. And so he says to the vine dresser, why don't you just go ahead and cut this tree down? Let's make room for something that's going to be more fruitful. Let's make room for something else. And, uh, but the the keeper of the vineyards asked him and he, he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also. Uh, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. And so I want to preach a message uh, entitled The Kingdom of Production. The Kingdom of Production. The Kingdom of God is a kingdom that produces. It, it produces changed lives. It produces Uh, joy and strength in some of the most difficult times in our lives. And it's, it's a kingdom that is everlasting. It was before God put Adam 
in the Garden of Eden. And it's going to still be the kingdom of God well after the ages have ended upon this earth. And so we're a part of something that is uh, eternal. And we're a part of something that is fruitful. Every Christian, every person that has given their life to Jesus Christ has with that salvation, has the potential to become fruitful for the kingdom of God. And all we have to do is share it. Just go ahead and share what he's done for us. And sometimes people won't reject or won't accept your particular uh, testimony that you're giving to them, what the Lord has done. And that's all right. Just give it. If they don't want to receive it, you just go on, talk to somebody else. Tell somebody else about what the Lord has done. Because I'm telling you, he's been good to me. Amen. And I know that he has been good to you as well. And so even in these times that are so awkward, in these times that it seems that everything is just a step or two off and, and everything is just kind of messed up, you sense the opportunity for the kingdom of God to step into this and begin to bring production began to produce something that is going to uh, take place. And in these new generations, we've been around here a long time. I remember 9-11, those many years ago, and what a horrible event happened in that time in New York City and uh, some other places as well. And so we understand that this country has been through hard times before. Uh, But you know, when 9-11 came, it really stimulated uh, the people of America. And there were people that began to come to church that had not been in church. There were people that used to go to church that came back to church. Uh, People began to press in when they came into the house of God. They didn't just come and sit and wait till it was over, uh, but they were reaching out. They were reaching out in prayer, reaching out because a great crisis had come. And again, we were praying for our president and our country in such a time of turmoil uh, when the enemy rises up. Brother and sister, I want to tell you, there is an unseen enemy that has risen up against this nation as well. Not only uh, what the seen uh, enemies of our country and the situations that have gone on, and even in something like a virus that we did not, we didn't produce it, we didn't make this thing happen. Uh, But something did, something happened. But I want you to know that we have been rooted in him long enough to understand that we're going to survive this hard time as well. Uh, That he's already kept us through other times. And now we know. And so this man that was keeping the field, I see a twofold thing there. Uh, First of all, He allowed the man who owned the field to come for three years and find out that there was no figs on the fig tree. And so why didn't he start working on that after year one? Why didn't he start working on that after year two? All right. And so now it's up now for, for three years. The master, the owner of the vineyard has said, these three years I've come seeking fruit on this fig tree. And I have found none, so cut it down. It's taken up space in the garden. So just cut it down. And so the man answers him and says unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Lord, let it alone again this year also, and I'll dig out around it. Maybe I can get out some of the roots that are taking over their roots. I can uh, just dig around it and get some better soil in there and I can dung it. I can take the dung and, and, and fertilize the ground and all of this thing. My question is, why is it year three? Why is it year three when this man says, hey, give me one more year? And and I'm going to dig it up. I'm going to make the soil better. I'm going to go ahead and fertilize it. And we're going to have some result from that. I think the man should have been fired. (laughs) I think the man should have been dismissed from his his duties. If not, when he the the owner did not find the fruit. But even after this statement, oh, so you've you've been waiting three years to do something about this? 
Brother and sister, there are many things in many people's lives that need attention. There are many things. There's people that have come to the house of God and have worshiped the Lord and have uh, been a part of what the kingdom of God is. And yet they get weary and yet they get tired. I've heard, you know, all my life, you know, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. You know what? They prophesied that for 2,000 years in the Old Testament, that the Son of God was going to be born. The Lamb of God was going to come. And God was going to save the world. And many generations came and many generations went. But you know what? In God's time, the Messiah came. Jesus was born in Bethlehem and a whole new era had, had come into being that instead of the sacrifice of animals, that now the lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Isn't that a good gospel? That's a wonderful gospel. And so I just want to speak to you that maybe you've gotten tired or maybe you've gotten weary. Maybe you think, well, God's not there. I'm, I, you know what? <laughs> God is everywhere. God is everywhere. Remember the story about a little boy that was walking by uh, this man's house on his way to church. And he had 50 cents to put in his Sunday school offering. And, and several weeks he walked by and walked by. And, and this man was telling this little boy, he said, he said, you know that there is no God. You know that there is no God. You're just going there to that church and you're not getting anything for it. There is no God. And so uh, this little boy, he just kept going by there Sunday after Sunday. And uh, this man said uh, to him finally on one Sunday, he said, I'll tell you what, son. He said, you got that 50 cents again? He said, yeah. He said, well, I'll give you 50 more cents if you can tell me where God is. And, and the little boy looked at the man. He said, I'll give you a whole dollar if you tell me where he's not. <laughs> I'll give you a whole dollar if you can just tell me where he is not. Amen. Where is he not? He is everywhere. He is here. He is in tune. Not only with our nation. You know, our heart is, is firstly connected to our nation and, and what's going on. And the things that are happening. And we're praying, we should be praying. We're calling out to God, and we should be calling out to God. But you know what? We don't need to get it to the point that there has not been a harvest in years before we say, wait a minute, let's go ahead and dig about it. Let's go ahead and fertilize it. Let's go ahead with some intentionality to come into the house of God, whether you feel like it or not, already made up your mind before you got here that you're going to lift holy hands before the Lord and you're going to worship him and praise him and you're going to hear the word of God and you're going to amen the preacher because everybody knows preachers preach better when you amen them, right? And, and so it's just like putting wood on some fire, all right? And so we just might as well make up our mind that this is the circumstance in which we are in and we're going to do the things that we can do and there are some things right now we cannot do. But I tell you what, we maybe cannot come in here in a large group right now trying to uh, work with our government officials and to do what they recommend for us to do and show, uh, you know, honor of that. But that does not mean we cannot, you know, that we have to stop reading the Bible. It doesn't mean that we cannot worship at home. It, it, it doesn't mean we cannot call one another and encourage one another in the Lord. That we could just, you don't have to be a pastor to call somebody and say, hey, I just want to encourage you. Amen. The people you've sat in church with, you know, most of our family is not with us uh, today. We're not able to bring the whole family in at one time. But God is here and God is as he did in 9-11, as he has always done. He will show himself to be God. And he will get a harvest while everybody else is saying it's all dried up. There's nothing left in the ground. There's nothing anymore the kingdom of God can do. Are you kidding me? We have yet to see God yet rise up from his resting place. Amen. He's going to rise up again because we're calling upon him. And yes, we're calling. The church is calling. But we're not just calling for the church. We're calling for the city. 
We're calling for the state. We're calling for the country. We're crying out unto God because he is our father and that he is the one that has anointed us and has given us authority in the realm of the spirit. Amen. And I, I've just come this morning with this message, the kingdom of production. Amen. The kingdom of God is not fruitless, but it is a kingdom that produces and production. And so uh, we need to do that. We need to continue to do that. And so uh, I want to go to Revelation chapter 3. And he's writing uh, to the church in Sardis. John the Revelator is the penman, but God is speaking. And it says, and unto the angel of, of the church in Sardis, the angel there would be the pastor. And that, that's sweet, isn't it? Yes, I like that. Unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write, these things saith he, that hath the seven spirits of God. That's a different message, by the way. And the seven stars. And I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest, but you are dead. You have a name that you live, but art dead. You know, times like this bring revelation. Times, he says, be watchful, strengthen the things which remain. That's a good plan, isn't it? Let's not worry about what has fallen to the left or what has fallen to the right, but let us strengthen the things which remain. What remains? God's still sitting on the throne. What remains? Jesus Christ is still the Messiah. What remains? It remains that God is hearing our prayers. That God is able to lift up this country to be the beacon of light that it should be again. Not only a beacon of prosperity and a beacon of uh, good works, but the beacon of the glory of God and the, the message of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, America has sent some 90% of the mission money over the last hundred years or so, uh, you know, just from itself. And I believe that God is blessing for that. But I'm telling you, brother and sister, that as you are a part of this kingdom of God, it is a kingdom of production and you will not go through this season and this era in our history and not see what God is doing because he will be seen and he will begin to bring these things out. Amen. And so uh, we want to make sure we're not like the man that said, okay, three years it didn't produce anything, but now that I'm about to lose my job, <laughs> now that the, uh, he's about to cut down the whole vineyard, well, give me time and I'll just go ahead and dung it and I'll go ahead and trim it and I'll go ahead and prepare. Well, let's just go ahead and be prepared. Amen. Let's just go ahead and be ready, ready to come in and worship the Lord, to be ready. These days are not always going to be. These days are going to pass. The doors are going to open. And, uh, and we're moving together, but it's going to come. And I believe a great revival is going to come, especially if you and I, the people of God, have already laid the foundations for it. Amen? If the righteous are scarcely saved, where does the ungodly appear? And so, no, we don't want this to make us scarcely saved. We want this to uh, make us greatly, greatly saved, make us greatly powerful, that we are moving with sight and insight in the things of God so that he will begin and continue to nurture us in this season. All right, God hasn't run out of anything. All right, not even toilet paper. <laughs> that most precious commodity that we have. And so to the angel at the church at Sardis write, these things said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest, but you are dead. Whether you're watching this or hearing this or sitting here live, what few we have. <laughs> And uh, 
He said, man, could you imagine that feeling? Man, God speaking about the church at Sardis. Hey, Sardis, God's about to tell us how good we're doing. And you have a name that you live. But he said, you're not, you're not living, you're dead. You're not dead. Wouldn't it be terrible to be dead in the kingdom of God and not know it? Something was off step. Something was not right. He said, your works are there. You've got works. How many of you know we can't be saved by works? We'll be rewarded by works, but not saved by works. And so something had happened. The church had been known that it was a living church. It was alive, but yet from the viewpoint of heaven, from God's insight, he says, man, you're dead. And what does he say to do? First of all, he says, be watchful. Be watchful. And as you are being watchful, strengthen the things which remain. He says, things that are ready to die. So be watchful. What do we need to do in this season? We need to be watchful. We need to be watchful not only for our country, but over uh, the kingdom of God. That we do not lose out. That we do not appear to be strong and living. And God's estimation is death. We need a, a living move of God, a living breath of God. That's one thing I just love about the name of this church. I wasn't here when they named it, but I like that name, the Church of the Living God, because he is the living God, and he was the living God, and he's always going to be the living God. The end-day church seems to be doing the right things, but they're not reaching the right uh, place in the Spirit. They've got great works. I know thy works. You have a name for great works. You have a name that you're alive, but he said, it's not reaching. What's alive about you is not reaching to me. And he says that you had a name that you live, but you're dead. So he says, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. So let's strengthen the things that remain. Let's, well, I've only been praying about 10 or 15 minutes. Strengthen that. And you know what? I don't even think that you ought to kneel down with a watch. And just see how long it is that you're praying. That's not what prayer is about. Amen. But it is, did you connect with God? Did you lift up your voice to heaven and connect with God? Did you get this into the heavens? Not only asking for the need and asking for peace and asking for solutions to these days of great turmoil, but that we walk with God as Adam did in the cool of the evening. Walk with God. And have a relationship with him. He says, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. He said, you, you, need, to, you need to find those places that are about to die and breathe life into them. Right? Well, I used to read my Bible this much. And, uh, but I haven't read the Bible in a long time. You know what? Strengthen that. Strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. Bring life back into your walk with God. Amen. Have a resuscitation into your spirit, man. And let God breathe into us a fresh wind and a fresh fire. And the move and the breath of God within his people. That whenever the, the, uh, the oh, what am I saying? Just the, uh, the things that have been put in place, the policies, that's what I'm after, the policies that have been established, they're going to run out. Amen. But let's not wait till then to be praying. Let's not wait till then to be calling on God. Not, let's not just run to the Lord and run to the house of God and, and have to get a, a resuscitation. Come in filled with the power of God. Come in filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Read some of that Bible you haven't read for a while. Amen. Call out unto the Lord. This is a kingdom of production. God can take something so tragic as this is, not just for our region and for our country, but for the countries of the world. There's great suffering around the world right now. 
There are thousands and thousands of people uh, that are in big trouble right now. We've got friends in India. And I couldn't imagine, you know, all with all of that great population, all the challenges that they have there in India. And I've been praying for them and asking God to move in their lives. You know what? God knows our condition. And so he says, just be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. He said, go ahead, save the things that are about to die. Breathe a a fresh breath into them. And so he says, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. He said, you can do better. He can do better. Isn't that something? Is that a word we really want to hear from God? You could do better. But thank God for the mercy. Thank God for the truth. Thank God for his spirit that is willing to speak truth into our heart and into our life. As as these things begin to change, we're going to see again. It's not that God is under any sort of quarantine. But God has a plan for after this. And we want to be getting that in advance. He said in verse 3, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. He said, remember, remember how you received? Remember how you got so excited about the word? And that you heard what God was speaking to you. And and just hold fast and repent. And if therefore thou shalt not watch, he said, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So God says, remember where you were. Stir it up. Rekindle it. Prepare for it. Because if you don't, I'm going to appear as an enemy. I'm going to appear as a thief in the night. You're not going to be waiting. You're not going to be watching. Back in the early 70s, they had that powerful, powerful movie on a thief in the night. And it moved through our culture and it moved through our churches and, and brought revival back in those early days. I was probably nine, 10 years old. And I still remember Uh, That powerful, powerful thing. So we are to be preparing now for the time that the the, uh, things are lifted. Where now we can come back together as a body. Now that we can come back together and rejoice. But let's come in full. Let's come in already filled with the word of God and already filled up in our prayer life and and just walking in uh, at this time and watch what God's gonna add to what he did in the days of trouble now that he could bring forth a revival beyond uh, those times of hardship and cause us to be able to be a part of it. We don't want him to come upon us as a thief and we don't wanna be one that does not know the, the hour that he's coming. He said, there's only a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy. Amen. Isn't that strong? Just a few names in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy. Verse 22, he says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches, unto the churches. Perhaps people would expect pastors to be preaching to the church or preaching to the sinners. But in times like this, God's preaching to the church because God has a purpose in this. He didn't make it happen, but he can take it and steer it. He said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Yes, bring the sinner. But don't drop them off and go home. (laughs) Saints, get out of the car. Come on in the house. Amen. Amen. How do we know it's about God's people? 2 Chronicles 7, 14. 
if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. From sea to shining sea. Amen. Who, boy, if we could get those old sinners, we just get the sinners out of sin. If we get the sinners to go to church, if we get the sinners, no, that's not what he said. He said, if my people, if my people, if God's people will do what God says to do, we won't have to worry about the sinners. Amen. Because we'll be equipped to draw them in. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. You mean Christians with wicked ways? Every Jesus' prayer that he taught, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those that have sinned against us. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. The key to this is not for the culture to suddenly turn to Christ. The key to this is for the church to arise. Take the responsibility. Take the responsibility of our place in this era and in this time and this season. I'm an apostle in this region that was prayed into this region decades and decades ago. Took years for it to happen. The the apostle is someone who was sent. God has sent us. Not, Not just me, though. There's so many people sent. Not all of them as an apostle, some as a teacher, some as a pastor, but those are callings, they're still callings. But I cannot ignore 2 Chronicles 7, 14. As lukewarm as the church has been in recent years and months, but God has made us a promise If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. God doesn't say, I'm tired of putting up with you. I'm tired with your mess. He said, no, if you'll just turn, if you'll turn, From your wicked ways, I'm going to hear you. I'm going to hear you. God's paid too great a price to save us than to just throw us away. He shed the blood of his son. And so I just want to encourage you as the people of God. Maybe you're not saved yet. I hope this message is ministered to you as well. But let's take our responsibility and let us be a voice of prayer and humility and confession. If you don't know what to confess, maybe you don't have sins that you're ready to confess. Maybe we can ask God to forgive us of our national sins. That we can pray in behalf of our, na- our nation. But whatever, we're praying, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Thank you for listening to today's Church of the Living God, Living Godcast. We trust and pray that you were blessed by today's word. If you'd like to contact us for prayer or for more information about Church of the Living God, please visit our Facebook page at WinCityCOLG or give us a call at 859-745-1865.